Okay, hi everyone, this is Mano and I would like to show you how I built my uh, very, very compact, compact and light um, Canon EOS M run and gun rig. This is very, you know, a very uh, compact and small rig. So, um, yeah, I will just guide you through it because I think it has some aspects which are, aren't really seen that much and will and some of the, you know, uh, principles you can apply to other rigs. Uh, it doesn't have to be the Canon ESM. It's just everyone loves the Canon ESM. And that's why I just, I do this kind of rig for, on this one. But it works with any camera. So, yeah, let's just um, start rambling. So, basically, uh, what I use, I was really lucky to get my hands on a Canon M100 cage. Okay, as you can see, it's basically, um, yeah, uh, um, the Canon, Canon M100 um, cage fits the uh, Canon ESM pretty well. Um, you have to do some modding. I, I, I was really bad at this. So basically, uh, you have to dremel some stuff here because the original screw hole doesn't really is uh, is not really in the perfect position for the Canon ESM that's why yeah you can you can see the mess here um and then you have to dremel some space for here for the right side for the um the one screw that is for your uh, camera strap so basically i fiddled around with um you know there's a dummy battery inside and i already got the uh, connection to a USB cable so I can use bigger batteries which is really important because the uh, batteries um, aren't that great that come for the EOS M. So basically that's the cage. Um, for the cage itself I tried plenty of cages before. We all know this cage which is um, you can find it on Amazon, which is this half cage. But then the problem is you don't have the grip on the right side. Currently with this cage, with the M100 cage, you have this little grip. Really, really tiny grip, which is still great. It's still great. It, um, it, you could say it's not very that comfortable, but you know, for long periods of filming, when you have it in your hands, it kind of gets cramped and stuff. But I feel it's better than having no grip within half cage, in my opinion. Cool thing, it has also a NATO rail. You can put something here if you would like to. And one thing I added to make it more um, stable and secure was to use a uh, strap. Because when I do just this, I can just have it like uh, secure on my hand. Don't, I just don't have the fear of dropping it, which is great. And um, yeah, there are some more things I attach to the cage, which will I get to later. But for now, yeah, you see, so basically the M100 cage is really sad that this one um, is really rare to come by. There, the M100, of course, is discontinued, the Canon M100. And uh, the problem is, of course, that you probably will need to have to find this cage on the second-hand market, um, be it Craigslist or eBay or whatever you use. Um, I was really lucky to get one. I used plenty of cages before. As, you, as mentioned before, I used uh, this one, the half cage. Then I used this one, which is from the Canon EOS M... 6 and M3. It's M it's by it's uh, the other ones are from Smorek. This is from Fei Chao, which is I just got it really cheap for on eBay, like 20 bucks. It was really cheap. I had to do some adjustments because as you can see, I used the Viltrox speed booster and this uh, cradle stand thingy here needed space, so I dremeled this away and had to dremel here some stuff away to uh, fit the speed booster. Well, because speed boosters are awesome. Um, but the cool thing is, it has a grip, which is really nice. And 
you only need to make adjustments if you're going to use a speed booster. I could actually, honestly, to be honest, I could just remove this because you can, it has the screws here, uh, down here, and I could have just removed it and um, I would have not have to dremel all this thing out. Um, yeah, I didn't think that far, so that's that's on me. But other than that, there's a nice grip. But what I did not really like about this one, as you can see, this is pretty much wider than the Canon ESM itself. So basically there's this much space for the grip alone. And this kind of felt kind of felt weird to be uh, for me at least. Maybe it's just my hand size, I don't know. But um, this kind of felt weird. And so that's why when I got my hands on the Canon ESM 100 cage, I seize that opportunity and don't use that anymore. But the cool thing is it has a NATO, uh, no, it has a Manfrotto or plate on the, uh, on the bottom and has plenty of um, cool options. Also a culture here, which is great. Cold, yeah, this, this, I mean, culture here. The grip is pretty fine. It also has place for my little finger, which is neat. Yeah. Top, top screw holes, really like that. Overall, great alternative. Um, one alternative I would recommend probably, because I see it plenty of other people using, is the Canon M50 cage, which has this top part here. This is one thing I don't really like, to be honest. Um, it just, um, it looks, it doesn't, it loses the box shape for me, which is always cool. But I think utility-wise, it's really, really good and efficient to use a M50 cage. So if you don't, uh, if you don't want to use this half cage, which I wouldn't really recommend, if you don't want to use this cage, I would suggest using the M50 cage, which I don't have. Um, so yeah. Anyways, then um, last thing I wanted to mention about ca uh, camera cages is is basically. using this half cage and a three printed grip. So basically I found the, um, the printing files, the bl uh, blueprints for a, a camera grip for, for this cage, for this half cage. I found them on Etsy for like three bucks. And I thought this is really great. So what I did was uh, I purchased the uh, blueprints I, yeah, of course, the links will be uh, linked down below uh, in the description. And I went to a company. Um, I'm from Germany, so I went to a German company and said to um, I requested um, them to print me this grip. And so far, this is, to be honest, overall, this has the best ergonomi uh, ergonomics. Every from every single grip wise, best ergonomics ever. However, I'm not too sure about the filament, the durability of the filament. Um, I, to be honest, I'm I'm not an expert with three D printing. Um, there there were some options you could um, choose when you when you request this. Uh, yeah, something. Uh, when you make a 3D, 3D printing request to a company, you can choose the filament, the durability of it. Like it goes up in um, percentages, 10%, 20%. I chose 60%. I haven't had any issues so far, but there are... Um, I'm currently on manual focus. That's why I'm too lazy to, to use, uh, to go closer to the camera. But maybe you can see it right here. There are some cracks and... Yeah, to be honest, if you use maybe a bigger lens or something, I am not too sure if you would like to, um, yeah, continue using this grip because I really like it. But just for me, um, the, the, the reason I don't use it anymore is just the fact that it's 3D printed. And of course, you could say you can always print another one. But imagine um, you're holding your camera, maybe with one hand, for whatever reason, if you don't have your hand on the uh, left hand on the lens or something, and then it 
it cracks and it drops and then your uh, Canon EOS M or at least the lens may be uh, broken. Yeah, so basically that's a risk I didn't want to take. So, um, yeah, unfortunately for me, so basic, uh, that's why I don't use this, this one anymore, but I'm very, very, very um, happy with my um, M100 cage. So basically, if you have a chance to get one, definitely get an M100 cage. Um, uh, but they're really hard to come by. And yeah, um, yeah, for prices, I don't know. Um, I got them for a fair price. Uh, yeah. Okay, so basically, now that's that, as you can see already. So ba um, I already, I also taped this here because uh, the cable, I taped it so it doesn't flail around too much. I, um, I organized it a bit. We will organize this much more, but basically how it will end up, it will be sitting like this and um, yeah, you'll see, you'll see. Okay, so basically, next thing, I've got a strap. You see the NATO rail, we come to that later. And then we'll have the uh, speed booster. I use the Viltox speed booster because I'm a cheapskate. I uh, don't have enough money for the meta bones. Um, so yeah, uh, Viltox speed booster uh, works really fine to me. Only had, no, never had issues with this one. Um, yeah, that's great. Okay, next thing is next thing is this ra a NATO rail bar with a rod clamp. This is the best thing you can ever get if you would like to um, build a simple, clean, small, compact rig. Okay, if you want to like to if you. If you want to avoid a base, a big base with um, rods, this is what you have to get, okay? Because what brings you rods? It brings you opportunities to uh, mount a follow focus and a battery, okay? <laughs> yeah, and a battery. So basically, those are the two things you would like to mount. Uh, why would you use a huge um base for two um yeah for for two rods if this is enough okay we want to build a s small and simple and clean looking uh run and gun rig uh which is really compact okay so basically now of course we have the rod clamp with the nato rail this is very important um because yeah because one thing we can uh, one thing we can mount is a okay uh, this is by 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 the way by Camvate uh, not sponsored or anything uh, Camvate it's just uh, less expensive than the small rig one there's also a small rig one which I also use for this rig but in for another use case um, so uh, yes and also this is from the length it's just perfect see how it just it just fits perfectly on the length of the m100 cage and um, that's why i use the uh yeah the cam weight one and not <coughs> and not the uh, small rig uh, clamp because of course they have also their own version but the other their version is longer okay now i use um this uh, rod i i don't know how, i actually don't know how long this is um, okay, guys, for for the guys who know centimeters and stuff, it's it's twelve centimeters. I don't know how much this is in inches because uh, I don't live in the U.S. Um, okay, I marked the placement where I want to put uh, how far I want to put it in here. So basically, the white stuff, <laughs> uh, guys, it's just the marker. Don't don't go in, don't get the wrong idea. So basically, this is the place. Now tighten it up, secure it. The cool thing is, uh, you can add a hot shoe or whatever you would like on here, and then have a place for a microphone. Isn't this great? But okay. But now comes one of the crazy things I like about this rig. This ingenious idea I had. Okay told you before 
you need okay we we actually we don't use a follow focus on this one but you could probably i guess <laughs> uh, but one another thing i mentioned was battery how do you solve battery we have this dingle dangly cable here which is annoying so first uh, to have it not dingle dangle anymore let's tie um let's make it clean with some well, uh cable wires which hopefully everyone should have because um once you buy any kind of cable you should definitely have a cable wire and another this is this is the another reason why i use a cheese hole rod instead of a normal rod so i can use this whole screw hole to fiddle my cable in and have it organize my uh, usb cable which is great because um otherwise it's just so messy ne no one likes that um yeah no one likes that you don't if you you just the thing is if why do we want to have a compact uh, rig like this oh, okay this i i did this better before to be honest okay this might take a while sorry about that okay to be oh god th th this is why i regret um unmounting stuff on my rig because or, or at least this cable stuff because i knew i wouldn't be able to rep uh, reciprocate uh, reproduce the same cleanness of my rig before which is so annoying but okay i do it for you guys just for you actually i do it for myself because i don't know okay because i feel like it yeah, I don't do it for other people. I do it for myself because I feel like... Okay, guys, I'm, I'm going on a tangent. Um, so, basically, we got this now rather fixed. Okay, don't... Okay, don't look at it. Don't look at the mess. Anyways, so how we have... Uh, so how do we mount the uh, battery solution? I use NPF batteries for this one because they're smaller than smaller sizes. You could probably do some tweaks with a v-mount if you would like but this is uh, v-mount is just overkill for that so basically how do we mount the battery it's so simple but in, in my i think it's just so good i like to use this method on not only the canon esm i like to use it on any pocketable camera camera like the uh, black magic pocket original i just love that so basically what you do you get um you get these uh rot rot stuffs yeah this rot stuffs and what you do is to mount a camera mount okay a uh a twisting is it called twisting uh twisting camera mount on here so with that i'm i also mounted this way uh like the uh so the camera mount will face downward and yeah the the flat side of the rod what is this even called double rod clamp thingy this will face downwards and we just mount it here pretty much as close as possible doesn't have to but it's cool and then what I use is this newer that well, guys uh, cheap products come in all different kinds of brands. It's the same thing. This is newer. There's something uh, from Cine, CG Cine. There's something from Andua, I think I believe Andy Cine. They come in all different brands because um, they are all produced in the same factory in you know China. Little little small hands have to build this for us. So uh, okay, okay, guys, <laughs> getting dark here. But anyways, um, uh, so basically, uh, yeah, basically that's that's the um, NPF battery plate I use to mount, uh, yeah, this this. And the thing is, the small rig ones they have the screw hole outwards, which is actually uh much more simple to attach anywhere so basic but for this fortunately it goes inwards so i can use the camera uh, the monitor mount 
to actually lock it in place. And then, whoosh. Look at that. This is so simple. If you just use a just a NPF battery, you just go bam. Isn't this great? Isn't this great? We go bam, and then we can just uh, if you if you like this screen, you have a sun hood. <laughs> yeah, actually, I don't know. I use a monitor. I I show you which monitor I use. But uh, yeah, this is this is an option, guys. This is is so simple. So basically, rod clamp, then a rod. Use this clamp thingy, a monitor mount, monitor mount, and then NPF battery plate, and then NPF battery. And then you can just mount it here. Okay, then there's some more camera. Okay, I think I mounted it the wrong way. This way. Uh, another thing I'd like to mention, uh, just to be aware, it has a D-tab output, but don't use this one. Don't, don't you definitely don't use it because it already destroyed a battery on my Black Magic. It, uh, uh, it's, it's always iffy. I, I always try to use it with a monitor, and it's, then the monitor starts to flicker. It's really bad. Um, never use this. The D-pad. For anything, just rely on the USB and you're good. Should be fine. Okay, see? Easy. Easy. Okay, um, that's that. Okay, let's remove the battery because it's kind of heavy and kind of annoying. So, next. Okay, now you're asking, what makes a good, great rig? One, the battery solution, uh, like a compact rig, what you need is a battery, so battery solution and then um, and then better ergonomics. One thing ergonomic wise, I always love top handles, okay? In my opinion, every household should ha have at least one top handle that they can mount on every camera. Because top handles, you want to get the slow angle shots. Sometimes you just want to carry your camera around and then this is kind of cramped. You need a better grip. Use a top handle. Top handles are for the win. And I would like to have to be this uh, rig to be as small, streamlined as possible. This is why I use this small and tiny small rig uh, 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 top handle <laughs> with a NATO rail. The NATO rail, of course, uh, is really um, what a coincidence. We have a NATO rail on top. Not only is it a rod clamp, but we have a NATO rail. Isn't this great? Um, so, well, um, we can just mount this one here and have a uh, have a nice nicey nice um, top handle and it still looks so compact okay i'm sorry the camera is really close um that's just how it is i don't have much space i'm sorry i'm sorry guys um so yeah basically you can just grab it here yeah the camera is really close <laughs> Yeah, next time, next month, next time we fix that. Um, I don't know. So, okay. So we have the grip here. We have the battery solution. We have the um, top handle. We have more space. So basically, what most people do when they in when they choosing a um, mo uh, top handle, they have they choose a top handle with a solution to mount a monitor. This does not have a solution to mount a monitor in the conventional way and our monitor from the Canon ESM is blocked, which of course sucks. This is really n annoying. You can't see the monitor. If there's a battery in front, you can use it this way. Actually, to be honest, this um, works really fine. However, and you have a, sun, a sunshade, 
which is great, cool. You can <laughs> you can put this to your face when there's a battery on here. You could put this to your face and have it something like a pseudo viewfinder. Kind of funny. Okay. Um, anyways, you don't. I I don't. I don't use the monitor from the Canon ESM. I use always an external monitor, and apparently we don't have an easy way to uh, mount it. Right? Wrong. So. Ba uh, what I use, we used a rod clamp with a NATO rail on top from cam weight. Now we use one from uh, small rig. So this is a they have always these flat NATO, uh, NATO rail re designs, which are mostly cool. They look slick and stuff, but this time it doesn't really matter. Um, but I really love this in general. Um, yeah, in general. I would also use this kind of stuff instead of the cam weight uh, clamp, uh, NATO rail clamp. And what we do, so uh, what we do is to mount this one in front of our top handle. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's in front of our top handle. Like this around this, you see, I don't have the screws and in, uh, screws inserted because they don't. I don't need them for this. What I'm for the method I'm going to use, I don't need them. And then we have a f <laughs> more or less floating NATO rail for something to mount on. And what are we missing? We are missing a monitor. And how do we mount a monitor? We mount it with a monitor mount isn't this convenient wow okay cool so basically this monitor mount goes it has it's it's a small rig one with a, a nato rail nato oh, nato nato rail uh thingy uh we mount it on front and then we have a place to mount our monitor Okay, then you're asking, last thing, last thing. Okay, well, Manu, there is this one NATO rail you have been, uh, that has been the whole time on the cage, which has not been removed, has not, wow, which has not been removed, and um, you haven't told us what's up with that. What's up with this NATO rail? This NATO rail is the perfect place to use uh, this sort of, okay, this is a... It, uh, I think it's a nice rig. Links in uh, links will be in the, you know. I, I think uh, it's a nice rig, uh, NATO clamp, and on the NATO clamp I um, mounted a hot sh uh, hot shoe, cold shoe um, extension, so I can mount it just easily on the side. Best is furthest away, and then this side. I have a nice place for a shotgun microphone. Okay, so basically what we have, we have uh, the place for a battery, we have a place for, uh, uh, whoa, 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 for our monitor and a place for our microphone. Okay, I just, I will build up everything now. Uh, okay, let's... Let's just be, um, add everything we need, right? Okay. Okay, now we added the battery. The NPF battery, which will last days. I don't know. Uh, never had so much to shoot before. Then, okay, for the monitor, what I want to do, do I use? Normally, my favorite monitor, my favorite monitor is this Fodka. Uh, uh, it's like DPA550 and it's really great it has this integra uh, like you, um, this sunshade which is really great and it's double uh, NPF um, connections of course uh, you can get like the more expensive version with SDI input and output uh, guys I'm, I'm not rich but uh, it has so much functionalities. I love this monitor. Um, of course, I bought it uh, used because I'm a cheapskate. But 
um, I for this for in general for compact rigs I wanted to use a very 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 tiny monitor this is like less than three inches I think I believe I don't know um, it uses another NPF so I can use just a very small NPF battery which I have also plenty of um, and this is when mounted this it doesn't because the problem is when you mount a, a five inch monitor everything gets really big um, it gets yeah it gets too big in my opinion and this makes just no sense if you want to build the, um, the rig as compact as possible and yeah basically okay I, I would really need to go farther away but anyways um, I know okay I know it's really really close but yeah <laughs> okay so basically that's that and this is the monitor you can insert I, I just insert the battery Okay, now you're asking what is uh, what's the last thing that that's missing? Of course, it's the lens. And for me, if I um, if I like to shoot run and gun with uh, the Canon ESM, I like uh, to use this lens. It's the Tamron uh, Tamron seventeen to fifty. And it's the version with uh, vibration control, so that's really neat if you sh uh, when shooting handheld, because of course this is a handheld rig. Um, we're shooting handheld, and I always use this in manual focus because, um, yeah, that's that's how we roll, right? Um, so yeah, this is EF mount. Of course, I have the EF uh, to EFM uh, speed booster on it, and. Yeah, everything you know how <laughs> this how how tight the gap is between the NATO rail and the lens. Yeah, this is this is uh, yeah. Of course, I planned it. Of course, I planned all this stuff. So basically, no worries about that. And yeah, this is basically um, the rig. It works really well. I love it. It's so compact. It's so cool. Um, just uh, get let me get the HDMI cable so I can give you an impression of how the uh, 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 monitor looks like. Yeah, I really like what I also love about the Canon ESM that it has a mini HDMI. I, it's so great that, that they use mini HDMI instead of um, uh, micro HDMI, which is so annoying and I just hate it. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, of course, uh, cable management. Okay, where does this? I always forget where it was the input, where was the output. Yeah, I'm really sorry about the, the setup, the camera setup. It's really close. I know, I know, I know. Um, but the thing is, of course, I don't want to show my desktop because it's not really tidy. And uh, yeah, I kind of feel embarrassed. Um, anyways. So basically what we can do is first, I usually first turn, oh, wrong. The monitor set up, then, yeah, this is kind of annoying. <laughs> the only thing that's kind of annoying is how to get to the power button. It's, it's not that easy, to be honest, but you can, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And as you can see, Ah, uh, okay, I didn't use HDMI mode, so that's why we had problems. So now you can see I'm HDMI mode. Okay, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 my overhead cam isn't uh, focused on this, but, whoa, can I? 
go with this? No. No! Oh, I accidentally pressed the power button. I'm dumb. Okay. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, works fine. It's great. Okay, let's turn it on again. Yeah, um, yeah, I will get some other footage from other angles so you can see the whole rig in a, f uh, in, in a hole, in full. And yeah, you can see OBS. Oh my gosh, OBS. What? That is kind of sharp. Oh no, it's not. Oh, it's, uh, I was looking on the screen instead of <laughs> uh, on top. But anyways, yeah. Um... This is the the rig. It's so compact. I know it's kind still kind of big, but guys, guys, guys. If you don't want to use, if you would like to reuse rods, don't you don't have to mount a base plate on uh, underneath. Just use the clamp on top and mount stuff this way. This will keep your rig. So compact, so light. I mean, it's okay, maybe it's not really light, but it's also balanced, guys. It's also balanced. This is so cool. Um, yes. Uh, anyways. So, okay. Uh, maybe you can see it. No, this is not the battery of that. I, I don't know. Anyways, guys. I show some footage about the rig in, in, in more wider shots. So you can really get a sense of how it looks and all the stuff. But yeah, this is really this is really cool. It's so compact. You can just put it in a bag like this. You don't have to really reassemble it. It's so neat. Um, I also love the Tamron um, lens. <laughs>